name is Sandra Timko and welcome to Lumen Christi. Amos 3 verse 3 states, Do two walk together unless they agree? What does the church say about relationships that are not in agreement anymore? Many practices in the Catholic Church are mysterious and heady. An example is the Eucharist, a great and awesome mystery. Transubstantiation of the bread comes to us as his body, the bread of life. Another mystery is penance or reconciliation, the gift of new life through forgiveness. And there's purgatory, a place of hopeful waiting. These church doctrines are just a few of the gifts based on scripture that the church offers her people. Another wondrous but highly misunderstood pearl the church offers is an annulment, a time of closure, re-examination, resolution, and finally moving forward. Misconceptions keep people blind about what a blessing it truly is. Today I have with me Tim Ferguson from the Archdiocese of Detroit. He is a lay canonist who serves as a judge and assessor for the tribunal for the Archdiocese of Detroit. And today, I hope in our time together, we will address and answer any questions you have. Welcome, Tim. Thank you, it's good to be here. Thank you, I'm so glad you came. It's um, a long-awaited program, this one. Um, a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about annulment, um, the good that's gained by it, and um, how necessary it is for us to move ahead. I came out of a just under 35 year marriage a few years ago and I for one applaud the church for the gift of annulment. Mm -hmm. So let's go right from the beginning. Where did annulment come from? Um, the, the concept of an annulment comes from the church's understanding based on scripture of marriage being a permanent institution. Uh, we read in the Gospel of Matthew for example that, that uh, uh, marriage is intended to be a permanent Thing. and uh, the, the phrase that we often hear at weddings of what God has joined, let no man put asunder, let, let man can't divide what God has joined. But we recognize and we realize that since marriage is a covenant and marriage is a contract, there are things that can inhibit what looks like a marriage from taking uh, full sacramental shape, from taking full fundamental shape as a marriage. And so the church can look at those relationships that have failed, those marriages that have fallen apart, and can determine, was, was that really a marriage as the church understands marriage to be? Or was that just a putative marriage? Was that just something that had the appearance of marriage on the outside, but is something that the brokenness was rooted in the very act of consent, the very beginning of the marriage? Uh, and if so, then the church can say, this wasn't a marriage, this wasn't a marriage as the church understands it, and allow the people to enter into a, a second marriage, allow people to move on to a different phase in their life. Um, so it, it really is scripturally rooted, it really is uh, historically based in, in the long history of the church. Uh, the church has been doing annulments, if you will, for, for centuries now. Uh, there's, there's sort of a misconception that this is something relatively new in the life of the church, but there are uh, cases of nullity uh, that we have records for back uh, in, into some of the earliest centuries of the church's history. Now I'm going to pelt you with questions okay. that people have pelted me with for the last mm -hmm. few years. Illegitimizing children. Mm -hmm. An annulment illegitimizes children. That, that's one of the biggest myths uh, that's, that's out there. The, the concept of legitimacy really is a concept that's rooted in the civil law. It is, it's not anything that really has anything to do with the gospel. There, there's, there's no such thing as an illegitimate child in the eyes of, of God. Right. Uh, unfortunately, for centuries, the church adopted this civil concept of legitimacy, which is really rooted in who inherits the property, who inherits the title, uh, and the church adopted that concept into the church's law. Uh, in, in recent times, in recent history, we've moved away from that, and I, I think that's a very good thing. Uh, but the church has always taught uh, that an annulment doesn't undo the status that a person has gained. And legitimacy, civilly understood, is really a status. So a child who is born into a marriage that, at the time that child was born, certainly looked like a marriage, certainly seemed like a marriage, that child has that status, 
And a subsequent annulment doesn't take that status away. Uh, I suspect that in the future, uh, probably not in the not too distant future, uh, the church will completely distance itself from this whole concept of legitimacy and illegitimacy and uh, leave that for the civil courts to determine because once again, I, it's fundamental to say that, that there is no such thing as an illegitimate child in God's eyes. Right, they're all a gift. Exactly, exactly. Now, <coughs> I've had people ask how, if somebody's been married a long time, as if time um, were the criteria for whether a marriage was sacramental or not. Mm -hmm. um, how, if you've had all these years together, how could it have not been a marriage? Mm -hmm. Okay, so address that. There's many ways it cannot be a marriage. Oh, sure, sure. There well, you know what? Before you even address that, let's go back a step further to make that even more clear. Define what a sacramental union is. Well, I, I think it's best if we just look at what the church's definition of marriage is. Uh, and this, uh, this is a, it's a definition that's found throughout the church. Uh, it's, it's canon 1055 in the Latin Code. 776 in the Eastern Code, uh, but it's also in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It's also in the uh, documents of Vatican II. Fundamentally, the Church teaches that marriage is a covenant. Uh, marriage is a covenant between a man and a woman who bring about in themselves that uh, that union, uh, that that union for the whole of life, that communion of the whole of life. Christ raised that communion, that covenant, to the dignity of a sacrament among baptized spouses. But all, all spouses, whether they're baptized or not, are called to enter into that covenantal understanding of marriage. What an annulment does is, since that covenant is brought about by an act of consent, by a, an I do, an annulment looks at the, the, the spouse's capability of really being able to freely say, I do, their capacity for understanding uh, what they're getting into, what, what this marriage entails, and their intention. Did they intend to enter into a marriage as the church understands marriage to be? Okay, the first one. The first one that you said? Okay. Is this person capable yep. of saying I do and understanding the depth of what they're just committing to. Exactly. Okay, so let's clear, um, clearly define how a person would not be capable. Okay, uh, let's, let's take a classic situation. Let's, uh, uh, um, someone who, uh, let's, let's say we have two 17-year-old uh, kids, really. Uh, they are, at the age of 17 in the state of Michigan and, and in the eyes of the church, they are capable of entering into marriage. Uh, they're, they're considered mature enough to enter into marriage. But let's say those 17-year-olds are uh, engaging with each other in things that they should not be engaging with each other, and a pregnancy ensues. Uh, they decide the only way that they can see out of this situation that they find themselves in is to get married. Uh, are they really freely choosing marriage? Or are they being pressured by family issues, by society's issues? Uh, do they see an alternate choice that they can make? Or is marriage the only way out of this situation that they've created? But is marriage freely chosen? And if it's not freely chosen, is it a real choice? Mm -hmm. And if it's not a real choice, is it really a covenant? Okay, another um, possibility with that one people that are coming from such poor examples mm -hmm. of what sacramental marriage is. Um, brutality in the home, emotional abuse, physical abuse, um, dysfunction, dysfunction, dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And they have no understanding because there's never been counseling inter intervened. Okay. So they have no example of what true sacramental respect and regard is. Exactly. So they bring in what they knew. That commitment isn't sound. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That commitment is not sound. And, and there's also the situation where, where couples um, are escaping from a, a home situation 
into another relationship. There are situations where cohabitation is, a, is another fine example of, of a couple begins living together and just sort of falls into that rut and marriage just kind of happens. It's not a real choice. Uh, and, and statistics show that, that cohabitation is a really poor foundation for a marriage because the question becomes, what changes in the relationship from the cohabitation to the marriage? What, what changes there? And if nothing changes, then what really is marriage all about? Um, there, there are a number of, of what we call canonically uh, indications, indicia, in a relationship that we look for that can help us determine, was this person really capable of marriage? Were, were these two people really building a foundation for a marriage. And as to your earlier question about the length of time in a relationship, there's an old uh, canonical axiom go going back at least to the 13th century, but probably before that, that uh, something which started invalidly does not become valid through the mere passage of time. So if two people were not capable of entering into marriage because of gross immaturity, because of some uh, psychological difficulty, because of some external pressure that inhibited their freedom, even if they stay together for 30 years, even if they stay together for 40 years, that doesn't make that invalid act of consent valid. Uh, so that's, that's why uh, the length of a marriage doesn't necessarily prove the validity of the marriage. For some people, um, I'm certain because I've been asked this, they think that through the annulment process, it means your marriage then never was. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case at all. Yeah. There was a marriage, mm -hmm. just not valid in the eyes of the church. Mm -hmm. um, it, it cleanses you of a, yeah. wrong, a wrong choice, no different than penance from, mm -hmm. from um, penance provides that for us when we've sinned. Yep. Go the, ahead. The, the term we use um, would be a putative marriage. It, was, it, it appeared to be a marriage to all intents and purposes, but that covenantal aspect of the marriage wasn't there. That, that real establishment of a communion of the whole of life was not there in that relationship. Couldn't you almost use um, Christ as the plumb line? If, it, since we're supposed to be Christ for each other, mm -hmm. and since the vocation of marriage is helping the other person get to Christ, mm -hmm. if we are not treating